So, okay. Hello, everyone. I think it's about time to start. Uh, hello, hello, everyone. So we will go, we will start. Uh, so I'm Damien Ramy, and uh, I'm Krzysztof uh, Tomaszewski. Uh, we are from OVH, and we will present you our integration of GPU in our uh, OpenStack infrastructure. That's so uh, how many of you knows what is OVH? OK, thank you. <laughs> Not much, so let's say a few words about it. So we are a hosting company, and our roots are in a dedicated servers. So in our cloud world, it's bare metal, rather. Uh, we started 18 years ago, so let's say we are adult now. And uh, we've grown up, and we got uh, 27 uh, data centers around the world. And about dedicated server, there are many numbers, but what I would like to focus is our public cloud and OpenStack related services. So currently, we are more than 190,000 of instances running, and we spawn more than 600,000 instances every month. And it's uh, more than 100 petabytes on our object storage service. And uh, on Ceph, so our block storage, we got more than one uh, petabyte. Currently, we have about 22 uh, OpenStack regions, and we are in uh, Sydney. It's not public cloud. Uh, we have uh, VPS, but it's still a service uh, based on uh, OpenStack. So we, you see that we are, we are spawning a lot and lot of uh, instances per month. And, but why are we talking about uh, why and what are we talking when we are talking about GPU? In fact, our customers, uh, we had some feedback about customers that they want more power, they want more things that, uh, because they have a lot of things that hit a lot, a lot of the CPU. Uh, I just made that to compare you the, the very the difference in terms of hardware between a CPU and a GPU. On a CPU, you can have, let's say, up to 24, uh, 24 core with hyper uh, even more uh, on certain type of very specific CPU. Where on the GPU, you can have very far more number of core. But uh, if you have more core, you don't have that much frequency. So it's very specific. If it's, uh, the GPU is very good if you have a big parallel algorithm. Uh, also, the memory is dedicated on a GPU and is very specific. You cannot change it, but it's a high-speed memory. Uh, so of course, on a CPU, you can put terabytes of memory if you want, but uh, it costs a lot, but you can. So it's, the GPU is very interesting for the number of core, but it's, as I said, very specific. So you need algorithms that are comp compatible to use it. If you have only one thread, one uh, an algorithm that is doing only one thread, it will not help you. You need to use specific uh, libraries like CUDA or OpenCL. Uh, so that's for the software part. It's, if you have all these, all these uh, conditions, it's, uh, the GPU are very cool. Uh, but it's a very good challenge for the data centers. For us, for high density data centers, it's a very big challenge for the power consumption because the GPU consumes a lot. And if it consumes a lot, it eats a lot also. So it's a very, very high challenge. And uh, the GPU integrity also, because we will explain you on this, that we are, do, we are doing PCI pass-through. And uh, so you are completely dedicated your GPU to your customer that can do anything with it. So uh, as we know, uh, we got some feedback from our customers that they would like to do some uh, GPU computation. So it was about time to go to this market. So we had to try it. So first of all, uh, we take to our, to, took to our lab for the, let's say, decent in this time a uh, graphic card, which was GeForce GTX uh, 970, and put it to our uh, host. And using PCI pass-through technology, it was rather simple. It just works. Uh, how, uh, how we uh, configure it, it will be a few hours uh, after. But like I said, it was just uh, Ubuntu desktop running easily on uh, our VM. So nothing to uh, say about it. So it was pretty simple with uh, old generation GPU card. 
but now it was the time to go to the production and give it to the customer, so ask to pay. And of course, they told us that it's a very old generation, so they, it will not be possible to use it. So we compare the, the, the GPU that you can find. Uh, we were more focused on NVIDIA RAMs range, and there is two, two big parts of range. The consumer lanes, so GTX, uh, that are pretty interesting because of the price, and the data center, the grid uh, lanes, that is uh, on the Tesla uh, model of NVIDIA. So you see that uh, so we try three, three GTX card, the 1060, 1070 there, and the 1080 Ti, and uh, I just had it the Tesla P100 to compare. So you see that the number of core, of course, is different between the two GTX generation. It's um, you you have uh, uh, one half on the first one, so it was pretty good in t because of the price. For you can find it for five hundred dollars easily. Uh, and the GTX 1080 Ti is, of course, a little bit more in terms of price, but it's very far more uh, interesting in terms of number of, co number of cores. The so Tesla range, so the grid range of NVIDIA, is very, very different in terms of price. So why? You see that there is not much core. It's the same infrastructure. But of course, there is a lot of difference. On the consumer range, NVIDIA just ensure that the die is well controlled in terms of power dissipation and so they are managing it with the power input. On the Tesla range, they are managing everything in the card. So if your RAM is uh, going to be to hit a lot, it will also reduce and control this part of the, of the graphic card that is not on the, on the consumer range. But our goal on the beginning was to, uh, to test the market because everyone is speaking about GPU, but more or less nobody is are using it. So uh, it's a very specific uh, market. So it was the first thing, it was to test it. So we, what we have done is to take some, some current range CPU hours that we have, uh, that we are all already proposing to our customers and put it some GPU. So we start with the cheapest one, so the 1060 and 1070. So the first question was how many GPU can we put on our host? Can I put 100 or 1000 uh, GPU? Of course. No, you will not be. It's depending on different things. The first thing is the, the physical uh, problems. You cannot, you cannot have uh, that much uh, PCI Express slot, of course. You will need a specific uh, motherboard to have uh, a big space between your PCI Express slot. So that's the, physical, the first physical limitation, of course. But also, you will be limited to the, with your CPU. Your CPU have a limited number of PCI Express lanes that you can handle. Normally it's 40. 40 on a normal Xeon Intel processor. Uh, on a, a standard GPU is using 16 PCI Express lanes. So if you have one CPU, one GPU uh, or two GPU, it's okay, you are in the, in the numbers. But if, what happens if you have, if you add more GPU that you, your CPU can handle, in fact, it will not change uh, anything, the only thing that is that your motherboard will reduce the number of PCI Express lanes dedicated to your GPU. So it will reduce the speed. Uh, so is it a real problem for your customers? It just depends on your customer use case. If your customers are doing uh, machine learning, deep learning, or neuronal network, of course it, they need a lot of bandwidth. So you, can, you have to dedicate, to dedicate them the maximum uh, speed you can you can have. If your customers are doing games or live rendering, 8x or 4x is fairly enough. And of course, you have the rest of the of the customers that are doing crypto crypto money, and they don't need bandwidth. So you can put uh, they just want the GPU to burn some algorithms. That's why. So we integrate them, and uh, it was not that easy. It was, in fact, there is a lot of small tips that you, you will have to do if you want to deploy this uh, GTX lanes uh, graphic cards to your, to your infrastructure. The first one is uh, the BIOS. Of course, you have to enable the VTD uh, technology. So VTD technology uh, you, is for Intel. Of course, you have the same for AMD. 
is uh, the virtual, uh, virtual, virtualization, sorry, helper uh, to help your VM to directly speak with, uh, with the PCI Express. So it's an helper to, to, be, to not go through the kernel layers. And uh, onboard VGA. It's the, the only thing that you have to do. The onboard VGA is just one thing that please take care. If you don't take care, it's awful. Because in fact, what, is, what it means, it means that uh, you have to enable the processor graphic card uh, for your BIOS, for your hypervisor, etc. If not, uh, your BIOS and your kernel will use the first GPU for your for its front buffer. So it will use a big uh, GPU cost and you will not be able to, to use the PCI Express on it because it will be handled by your hypervisor. The second part for the low level configuration is uh, VFIO. So the goal of VFIO is to, is to do the DMA interrupt remapping. Uh, so it's, uh, it's using the Intel VTD that uh, we just spoke about before. And it's just a matter of configuration that I put something very easy. The second step is to uh, use UEFI instead of CBIOS. Uh, so when you are booting a VM, uh, it's of course, uh, BIOS uh, is given to, your, to, your, to the VM, to your customer, so that the, the kernel can discuss with the virtual hardware you are providing. Uh, on for this specific generation of GPU, you have to, to not uh, propose the BIOS, but the UEFI, which is a rewritten, um, which, which is a rewritten version of the, the BIOS. On QEMU, it's called, we are using OVMF, which is a, available as any package in any package distribution. And the only thing you have to do to activate it is to put the tag on the glance image that your customer will really, really use. So we, you will need a specific glance image. And uh, you will need also to, to define in the qmu.conf the location of your OVMF code. Third step is to uh, configure the flavors. So that's more or less easy. So the first step is the, the Nova Flavor Extra Spec. You will configure the alias of your PCI of your, for your customers. So if your customer can see this specification, you, you will see only aliases that you will put. So I put two. The GTX 1080 Ti GPU with the number after. It's the number of PCI Express will bridge, so three GPU cards. And the second one, which is the uh, GTX 1080 Ti sound. Because of course, uh, you may all know that uh, on HDMI port, you have the video, but also the sound. So your graphic card have the, the sound rendering. So you will need to, for, to let your customer use the normal drivers, you will need to bridge also the sound. So that's for the Nova Flavor Extra Spec. For the, on, your, on the opposite, on the hypervisor configuration, you will need to whitelist the, the PCI Express you will bridge. So it's, uh, so it's a vendor of, uh, this one is NVIDIA, and the product. Uh, so the first one is the GPU, and the second one is the audio. And to make the bridge between the alias and the, you know, the hypervisor configuration, it's uh, the last part on the Nova scheduler that you will make the the parallel between the, uh, the alias you have made, so first one is uh, GTX 1080 Ti GPU, and the product and vendor ID, it's your PCI Express. So normally on that part, it was pretty simple. It's like, like any PCI pass-through. But we had to do some little tricks to be able to use it, to use our NVIDIA cards. So the first one is to hide the KVM hypervisor signature. So it's uh, small things that QMU and LibVirt handle, but on another version, it was not, in another version of OpenStack, it was not uh, possible. So we had it, we call it KVM hidden. So it's just, uh, so it's exactly the same on the QMU uh, on uh, LibVirt. It will put this, this tag KVM hidden to true. So what happens? Uh, on, the, on the top, you see what happened in the VM 
uh, if you don't have the KVM hidden. So a simple demisage grep will uh, show you the hypervisor detected, which is KVM on our side. And if we activate it, it will completely hide the fact that the VM is running in a KVM hypervisor. So the only thing is that it's doing is hiding the hypervisor concept. Uh, it has been ported to Pike, I think, yep. and it's merged in uh, IMG, e -I -M -G, hide hypervisor ID. So this tag is available. Another step is to, we advise you to, to have something as close as possible to something real. So we change uh, the CPU mode on our hypervisor to go from the non, so the normal concept uh, that is hiding a part of uh, the flags, the CPU flags, to the host model. So we are giving to the VM the exact version of the, the processor we are using. We are also exactly, some tricks, some other tricks, we are also exactly giving the, the infrastructure we have. So two CPU sockets, uh, on this one is eight cores and two threads. So if you have done all these steps, it should simply work. So uh, this example is for an Ubuntu, but it will be exactly the same for Windows. So just uh, NVIDIA SMI, and you see that uh, we have the free GTX, GTX card. OK, so after this point, uh, we'll learn how to put this configuration on a higher level. But we ask ourselves, uh, what is the impact of uh, our uh, hardware architecture to the performance of uh, GPU? Because this is something that our customer asks for. So we uh, took a deeper uh, view to our uh, Haswell architecture. And it's apparent that there is no diversity for the uh, cores in a CPU. And uh, there are some com uh, concepts like uh, NUMA or uh, COD, so cluster on die technology from Inter since uh, Haswell technology, which gives, uh, put some more complexity uh, to the communication uh, between uh, your core and your PCI uh, Express devices. So there are some cores that have closer access to your uh, PCI Express controller, and few of them, uh, depends on your CPU, uh, has the bigger latency when they are uh, contacting to PCI Express controller, so the transfers latency uh, will be higher. So uh, we took uh, two hosts uh, on our production. Uh, there is one host, uh, which is uh, one uh, Numa node. It doesn't mean that there is only one CPU. Uh, in this case, this is the COD feature is enabled. And this is virtual one Numa node. And it uh, takes all the um, cores uh, for the CPU. And in this host, uh, in fact, um, there was uh, two uh, CPUs uh, to hardware. And even on those, uh, each of the CPU, there could be uh, two manuals. On the second host, uh, we have uh, default configuration, so uh, two new manuals. And there is another thing that makes things uh, even more complex. There is uh, hyper threading, uh, which uh, allows your one core to execute two threads at once. So uh, we can uh, check it on our uh, Linux configuration using this uh, comment. And we see that the, the there is uh, zero core, which uh, siblings 20, one 21. So the difference between them is about uh, it's a 20 uh, number. And of course, uh, this uh, view can be uh, detected using some other uh, software like NVIDIA SMI, but here I wanted to present you how you can get this info using uh, default Linux command. And when you're browsing uh, your CPU info, uh, you can uh, build some kind of array uh, where you can find out uh, that there are uh, some um, domains, and as you we can expect, these domains are uh, related to these NUMA nodes, uh, what I was uh, talking about. So how does it affect our uh, performance? So first of all, I took the, one of the um, open source uh, benchmark uh, uh, package. It's uh, open source uh, available on uh, GitHub, which are doing some uh, math. It's for non-traditional architectures. 
and it's spawning dozens of tests on your uh, GPU. Uh, as we can expect, uh, many of them has no difference uh, between how you pine your uh, hypervisor uh, process uh, to your uh, core, so which new node you are using. Several tests show some patterns, uh, but not necessary for a host with one new node. It doesn't matter the values uh, on the colors, you can see some cluster uh, for patterning uh, the uh, values. For one new node, there is nothing that you can clearly see. Okay, maybe some, but the values itself mm, not differ much. But if we take a look for the two new node, uh, hosts, you can clearly see that there are some uh, tests that are really affected. Uh, depends which uh, cores are closest to your new node or uh, far to new node you uh, took. And as you can see, there is a value 11 uh, and something and 15. So differences are quite significant. And it's worth to notice this yellow part uh, here. This is uh, values that we got when we uh, conduct test without any manual pining of uh, thread to uh, CPU. So what was the most impacted? There are uh, two tests that are doing some sophisticated uh, math computation. I will not go deeply inside of that, but it's what is worth to mention, there is one tra uh, test, triad, uh, which was uh, most affected, and this uh, test is doing PCI Express transfer uh, time. It checks transfer time. So as we could expect, if the, uh, your hypervisor is pined to the core, which has far uh, to your PCI Express, it means that transfer time can be affected. Second test that we conducted was Ethereum. It's quite popular um, software to do uh, uh, cryptocurrency mining. And on the left, we have one new node. On the right, two new nodes. Yes, we can see some uh, patterns, some clusters, but the values itself are not different much. It's about 1% uh, uh, of difference. So as a colleague has said, uh, crypto mining, so computation on a GPU board is not affected uh, by the transfer between your host and your uh, graphic card. So to resume. Uh, it can be uh, up to 30% of difference uh, for the performance between uh, pining your uh, threads to your um, hypervisor process to the farer or closer um, core, uh, depending on the, which new node it uh, hit. Uh, but it's not for all tests. Uh, if you uh, really need uh, high PCI Express transfers, uh, it's something that you can uh, concern. But for the most of the cases, it's almost no difference. And what is also worth to mention, uh, Linux scheduler, default Linux scheduler usually uh, do the job. If your host is not overloaded, it means that you can just simply give uh, this uh, work to your scheduler and uh, performance is maybe not degraded, but it's uh, about 3% uh, according to our test, uh, smaller than the best performance that we got uh, using manual pining. Uh, all about what we said was uh, PCI pass through. Of course, uh, what is not stopped, it's uh, uh, running fast, and there are new technologies appearing on the market. Uh, one of the concepts that is pretty new, especially for uh, uh, OpenStack and uh, KVM Camo uh, um, idea, is uh, VGPU. Uh, this concept uh, is uh, um, evolve uh, by many vendors. Uh, mostly AMD is using uh, MX GPU technology. It's something more like SRIOV for your network card. So let's say it's uh, more um, hardware solution uh, to give you virtual uh, GPU. Um, recently, uh, Intel, Red Hat, uh, with some cooperation with NVIDIA, created uh, new uh, it's an abstraction on uh, Linux, which is called uh, Mediata Devices. And it's supported by uh, Intel Graphics uh, uh, Virtual Technology and by NVIDIA Grid. What is, uh, you can find it on uh, Linux uh, kernel uh, since version 4.10. Uh, 
and in a camo since version 2.7, libvirt 3.2. And there are uh, Intel HD Iris GPU supported, and so NVIDIA uh, grid uh, GPUs. What is it? It gives you a possibility that you, let's say, split your uh, GPU for the smaller uh, pieces. Uh, so it's called the profiles. In this case, uh, uh, I could find on our um, OVH dedicated server that has this uh, Tesla M60, so Maxwell uh, technology uh, card, uh, such possibilities to uh, enable profiles. So it's starting from two uh, vGPUs. This uh, graphic card, this Tesla card has two GPUs. Uh, so we can start to split it to uh, divide it by two, up to 32 virtual GPU uh, per board. But there are some limitation. For specifically for this card, uh, M60 can uh, split only for, to four profiles that on guest uh, there is Linux supported, according to NVIDIA documentation. Even more, if your customer, so your uh, virtual machine uh, has to do some uh, computation on GPU, so using uh, SUDA or OpenCL uh, libraries, there are only two uh, profiles that are uh, available, and as you can see, there are profiles that are literally the whole uh, GPU board. So the difference between PCI pass through and this vGPU for computing is not uh, different in this case. So one last word just to, to, to finish. Uh, so we try to, as I told you, we try firstly with uh, 1060. Uh, we launched it in May 17, and the good idea was to launch it, uh, to launch it when the cryptocurrency mining was at uh, the highest level. Of course, it, we didn't check it before launching. The second problem was that our instances was given with very fast CPU, which helped a lot, a lot the miners. So we were sold out in four hours. Uh, so for the second launch, we more discuss with customers, of course not miners, but uh, real customers, let's say, that are uh, using the, the, the GPU for machine learning, for video rendering, etc. And they told us that they need more powerful GPU. That's why we go to the 1080 Ti, which is uh, the highest uh, performance on the GTX market. And they tell us that they don't need the CPU. So the only thing that they want is twice RAM uh, versus the RAM of the, of the GPU. And uh, just two cores per VM is fairly enough. So don't need to have a big, uh, big CPU. So that's, uh, they, were, they were very, it's currently our main range and it's uh, working very well. So now what we are working on is, uh, as we said, grid, uh, grid range. So with the vGPU, we are also checking the AMD EPIC. Uh, so I discuss about PCI Express lanes on this uh, specific processor. You have far more PCI Express lanes, so you can have uh, uh, you can put uh, more GPU at uh, 16x. And uh, the most uh, the most of the work is work is on the hardware control of the GPU. So as we told you, on PCI Express, we are completely bridging the VM up to the, uh, the PCI Express. So the problem is that you completely lost the control of your GPU. Uh, so if, you're, if you trust your customer, it's okay, no problem. But if you have public customers, you don't know what they are doing with it. And uh, you cannot control the temperature, you cannot control the performances of your GPU. So you cannot control anything. The only thing is that when the VM is destroyed, you get back the control and you can do check, but you can't do anything during the, the lifetime. And that's our biggest problem currently with this solution. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Yes. So the question is how many GPUs we have per host? Yes. Okay. 
So for the moment, we were completely focused on, uh, on to have these maximum performances of the GPU. So we put, uh, we put uh, a small number of GPU per machines to always have uh, 16x. Uh, because we are completely focused on machine learning uh, and, this, and all these so first customers. Our customers are more uh, interested in GPU computation than uh, like VDIs. So they don't need uh, 64 uh, graphic card powered uh, virtual machines that they can present on desktop. They are interested to do some computation, so they need power. So the number of uh, GPU is not so important. They need one GPU that is powerful. So. The other point is that uh, also don't forget, as I said, that it's consumed a lot. So on a, data, on a data center, if you put all the, the power consumption in one rack, uh, it will be a lot of trouble, so we try to split it on uh, the whole DC. Yeah, I was just wondering if you have like a sweet spot between CPU to GPU, um, because if you got like 100 GPUs and then maybe you got two, two CPUs in there, if the CPU will be the bottleneck or if it is critical to the GPU? So I was just wondering if it's, it's, it depends on your customer usage. If they don't use uh, the CPU, normally they use the CPU only for the normal life of the VM and only transfer to, to the GPU. Uh, they don't need CPU, they just told us that they need to thread just to be sure that uh, it, will not, it will never block. So we are, we are on our current range, we put some, uh, some normal uh, double core Intel, Xeon, and that's worked very well. Yes? We're looking forward for the new IMD Epic. It can it gives some promise about PCI Express lines and uh, hardware optimization. How we can use it more for the, these purposes. Yeah. So. So the question is, what, uh, which release we are using for that? Uh, currently, we are on uh, Juno and Juno. Newton. Juno and Newton. Pardon? Juno and Newton. So on Juno, of course, it was not uh, it was not uh, the normal Juno. We had to backport a lot of things. But it was uh, when we started this project, it was our main uh, version that we have on the on the production. So of course we had to adapt uh, Juno to be sure to be able to use uh, the GPU. But I think uh, PCI passed through since uh, Havana even, so there is concept yeah. itself. So it's uh, quite uh, uh, mature uh, solution. But actually, to, uh, actually, Matt, given that so you said you are on Newton, but as far as I know, the Kevin Steven feature that you have in the eye yeah. was in Pi, so mm. it's just like the back process for you. Yes, yes. I mean, for all the other yeah, of course. Okay. It, right so now, if you want to use it, use Spike. Clear. Okay. Yeah. So my next question: It sounds like you have tried different parts. Mm. Yeah. You put for one part in the other. Do you have to then just change it to no. one part? So the same in whatever inside the world. Okay. Yeah. So of course, uh, if, uh, according to configuration, you have to put proper vendor ID and uh, product ID, so it's normal. And uh, some uh, graphic cards, there's uh, more older one, doesn't need, let's say, tricks to enable it. But the uh, recent ones needs all these uh, small tricks to make it work. So if you would like to put this GTX 1080 Ti, it needs all these small steps to uh, proceed. It doesn't matter about uh, release of OpenStack because still it's PCI pass through. So you have the same device as you will have it on uh, hosts, you have it on a virtual machine. So the um, concept of hiding uh, the signature of hypervisor matters, and that's the case. Uh, as you saw, our um, customer needs are uh, computing, not VGPU. And the profiles for Tesla are rather uh, limited. 
and uh, if you balance cost and the performance that you can win between a customer uh, a range of uh, graphic cards and Tesla grid range of uh, graphic cards, it's uh, hard to compare. So we go for the customer range, which are performant. Uh, of course, with uh, some uh, issues with uh, maintaining and administration, so there is no, let's say, hardware control on your graphic card. And the, but the performance uh, versus price is more, let's say, also, don't forget that on the Tesla range, uh, so you need to buy a higher, ch higher price for the, you will need to have the higher price for the VM, for the GPU, sorry. But also you will need to buy the license. And there is a lot of license that you need to buy to make the virtualization, to make some uh, CUDA on it. So of course it's, it's add a lot to the price. Uh, to be honest, uh, when we catch this information about the performance that we can get for our customers, so computing power is the similar as we going with PCI pass through. There was no so let's say, sense to go further because there is no win. If we go for the VDI market, of course, then you can put 64 VDIs per uh, graphic card, and there is uh, if there is a market for it, of course, this is a solution. Of course, uh, there is some issues uh, still. Uh, NVIDIA support more Citrix and uh, VMware world than uh, KVM. There, are, of course, works uh, for Mediate devices. It's still, I think it's uh, for 2018 first uh, quarter of year, right? The, the, let's say the final solutions. So it's ongoing, uh, the process. So if you would like to mm, work on the supported uh, software uh, from NVIDIA vendor, you will need to go for the Citrix, Citrix or VMware uh, stuff. Of course, there are some. Yeah, that's what one of our points on the beginning, which is uh, the problem of PCI pass with that you will completely bridge. So the customer can do anything with your GPU. And that gives us some trouble. So yes. We are checking the GPU each time. Uh, we are trying to, each time a customer is giving us uh, back the, the GPU, we are completely analyzing it to, to ensure that it's still working, that the power consumption is still okay, et cetera, et cetera. Kind of quarantine. Yeah. So that's firmware, you, you check all that already Yeah. Yeah, we, as we are doing PCI pass-through, we have no control anymore when you are booting a VM. So we are doing it before and after. Yeah, we have, uh, so we have two for the last, uh, so the GTX 1080 Ti, we have two flavors, uh, one with one GPU, so we are putting uh, uh, some uh, more than one VM, of course, on the, on the host, and uh, free, and no uh, over allocation, no only uh, dedicated resources.
Are there other questions? To be honest, I don't know if we catch this problem. Which I'm not sure I if I get your uh, question well. Oh, okay, sure. Okay. Cool. Okay, so thank you. Thank you very much.